We picked up this Suburban for a decent price. Uh, we had plans, you know, to put the front end kit on here, lower the Suburban, possibly get it painted or wrapped because, you know, there is some, you know, some scuffs and paints fading or whatever, but we, we had plans of that and throwing a turbo kit on, tuning it and making it a really cool Suburban, but um, I just don't have time for it right now. So we're just gonna throw this front end kit on it so we can get our truck in the shop and uh, get started on the big project that we got coming up. All right, guys. All right, got the whole front end off. This is where I'm at right now. But I believe I'm supposed to cut those brackets off and weld it about two inches below it so it'll fit the HD bumper brackets. And then once we do that, we get to put everything back on. There's a hood and the fenders are around back. Alright, let's get back to it. Got our truck in the shop. So now the Suburban's out of the way, we can get to tearing this thing down and uh, making it just a little bit better. Um, we're running in the valve float, anything above about 12 PSI. We can sometimes hit 13 or 14, but it, it goes back, it's like a misfire. Um, I've already you know, checked plugs and wires and coils and you know, fuel, everything. So I, I know it has to be valve float. This motor has 300 some thousand miles plus. So we went and picked up a few goodies. We got uh, our valve springs right there. We're also gonna change out the cam. That one is a stage one torque cam. And um, we're also gonna uh, take this motor right here. We're gonna take it apart. It's a 150,000 mile LC9. And we're gonna check the stock ring gap. Well, not the stock ring gap, but we're gonna check the ring gap at 150,000 miles and see if it's, uh, if we gotta gap the rings or anything. Haven't decided yet. I really wanted to take this 4.8 as far as it would go. Um, I, like I said, it's seen 15 pounds of boost, it's seen 7,000 RPMs, and uh, it, just, it just keeps kicking. This one is 100 pounds lighter, a little bit more cubic inches. Um, haven't decided yet. So not sure if we're gonna put all of these goodies in this motor or in that one. Comment down below what you guys think. Shout out to Michigan Motorsports for helping out with this build. Uh, we got our ARP head studs. We got the pro version. Um, we also got new lifter trays. We got push rods, we got the trunnion kit. This right here should be Yep, these are our LS7 lifters. We got uh, the DOD delete plate in case we decide to use this. New chime and chain. Um, you got some oil and filter. You got some uh, suspension parts too. Also, what do you guys think about a do-it-yourself uh, traction bar setup? That's what this box is right here. Um, we'll get to more of that in another video. But um. Let's get started on this build. I'm excited. For those of you guys who, who just joined us, we are trying to build the best all around street truck, dedicated street truck from which you can take to the, you know, the strip every now and then. And um, you know, keeping it street, street tires, everything street. Be able to get in, drive it to the grocery store, 
you know, put regular pump 93 in it. And um, so far, we've gotten down to this. If you like content like this, please hit the like button. If you wanna see more, hit the subscribe button. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, start tearing this one down. I already took the first piston out and we're gonna go ahead and check the, the ring gap on these rings right here. And once we finish with that, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, we'll start tearing that one down, see what that one looks like. Got the first ring in there. And let's start out with, let's see, let's start out with 18, 25 only fits halfway. So we'll call this one 24 thousandths. So honestly, 24 thousandths and 26 thousandths, that is not bad because I believe a lot of people shoot for 26 thousandths on the top ring and 28 thousandths on the middle ring. So, I mean, I would run it guys. I really would. All right, so looking at the board, you can see the top ring um, was anywhere from a 21 all the way up to a 25, which is pretty decent. So the general rule of thumb and I'm gonna put this on the, the screen, is for medium boost, you want seven hundredths per inch of bore. And that translates to, get my calculator out, about 26 thousandths. And for mild boost up to, you know, 15 pounds, that translates to, I believe, 20 thousandths. So ring gap between 20 thousandths and 26 thousandths is good for up to 30 pounds of boost. Um, for high boost, you're looking at, you know, 30, 31,000. So this right here with what's on the board and what was in that motor would be good for 15 to 30 pounds. Uh, you keep it conservative, you know, 15 pounds, which is plenty, by the way. So if you, if you got a 5.3 that's making 400 horsepower, 15 pounds is a little bit over double that. And you're talking about 800 horsepower, which, I mean, you can, you can live with that pretty much all day long on these, on these, uh, these stock bottom ends. So, um, now that that's done, we're going to go ahead and start tearing this down. So I need to clear off all this space so we can have room to take off all these parts. But, um, yeah, ring gap on a stock 150 mile 5.3. There you have it. All right, guys, I'll catch you on the next one. Not sure if this is going to be, the same video or the next video but um if it's not a different video i'll catch you guys on the next one where we start tearing down the truck if it's in the same video i'll see you guys in literally a second